Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Cheminitz and welcome back to another Dye Pot PS episode. This is a monthly series that is complementary to the Dye Pot Weekly series and is created in part as a reward for Cheminitz patrons um, and they get early access to each new Dye Pot PS episode every month. Today we are going to look at creating some fade sets. I have some mini skeins that I want to use and I think we're going to do a all-in-one pan fade type technique. At least that's our goal. And we're going to play with two different yarn bases that I think will be extra fun. Today we are going to use two different yarn bases from Wool to Die For. We are going to use Sheila's Titanium, which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon sock yarn. It is two ply and I really, really like it. Um, and it's the typical bear color that you are used to seeing. The other yarn base we're gonna use is called That Yak Sock. Yeah, that's what it's called. And this beautiful yarn is 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, and 10% nylon. So fiber content wise, they are not the perfect comparison, but there's something reasonable in there in that they have similar amounts of both nylon and superwash merino, but the big difference <laughs> is the yak. Not only does it change the, the base color to a beautiful warm brown, but it also probably will slow down the rate that colors absorb to it. Uh, and so things that maybe will be a little bit sharper on the titanium base might feel softer and more blown out on this. That is, if a yak blend is similar to the effects that I might see with a cashmere blend or silk blend or alpaca blend. Uh, so I haven't dyed yak before, but well, we'll see. There are also more plies in the That Yak base, um, and there's a beautiful heathering to it, probably from the blend of different fiber types in here. But we're gonna have it all in one pan and have some fun. I am pre-soaking all the yarn in just some plain tap water. I had so much fun playing with the fluorescent neon rainbow colors in the June 2020 Chemnitz Dialong live stream that I wanted to pull out those colors and play with them again today. Uh, I thought that it could be really fun to see how these more neon tones look on this warm gray or cool brown base. But the reason why I also decided to throw in that titanium sock is that we know that these more fluorescent colors sort of take, they spread out a little bit more. Uh, they take more time to bind and to absorb to the fiber. And so having that present will be a reasonable comparison for uh, if we're seeing like where we, where we might see speckles versus not see speckles and things like that. All the tools and equipment that we are using in this video are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are never used for food. This is a four inch stainless steel um, chafer catering steam pan and I love using these for dyeing yarn because it allows me to spread things out quite a bit. If you'd like to learn more about any of the tools or equipment that I use in my videos, I do have affiliate links in the video description and a link to a blog post where I talk about my favorite tools for dyeing yarn. Now, my relationship with Wool to Dye For is just that as a customer, I have no affiliate or any kind of marketing relationship with them, but I will be also linking the yarn bases I'm using in the video description. I decided to lay out the yarn in the pot before adding water. Don't worry, we need more water. Even with the liquid remaining in these skeins from the pre-soak, we still need more water and we need some acid in here because there's no acid in the yarn yet. I decided to arrange the minis so that way we have two of the yak skeins and then one of the titanium and sort of alternating like that. I like having that spread in a pan. And in this case, for doing a fade set like this, I like having the pan a bit more crowded than I might if uh, I was doing full skeins, just because it's gonna, that separation will allow me to create multiple different colors all in one pan. In general, when I'm dyeing in these steam pans, I like to do, I would think 200 grams is a sweet spot, but with minis, I feel like I can do more because since 
the there aren't so many strands there it tends to be easier to access a lot more of it and to spread things out a bit more evenly and so this is by no means perfect but as I pick I think we'll probably do three colors as I pick three colors and the way that I sort of mix and blend them together hopefully we'll get some fun differences in what we see here one thing that's really handy about this is that the more white skeins is giving us a sort of demarcation um, for the others and so it's going to make it easy for me to say okay like what 20 percent of the pan is but uh, that isn't absolutely necessary and even if I did this perfectly and you know the the two different yak sets aren't going to be identical and by perfectly I mean there isn't perfection with this kind of technique. It's about feel and color and fun. I just added six cups of water and four tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, this is enough so that way some of the yarn is beneath the surface. I could have done less, but I figured that this felt like a really nice amount here. And I'm just, since the last one had the vinegar in it, I'm just sort of helping move it through and making sure things are well distributed. You may have noticed that I have zip ties going every three skeins. This will allow me to pick up and flip the yarn over if I feel like that is something that I want to do um, with this yarn. And it might be, and so this gives me that option. It would be a lot harder for me to flip the yarn without having something I can grab onto. As I turn on the heat to start warming things up, I would like to take this opportunity to give a huge thank you and shout out to Jessica Parco, Karen Siegel, and the rest of the Fiber Patrons. You'll see some of their names going across the screen right now. Patreon is a platform that allows viewers to connect with content creators that they really enjoy and support them and in return get some fun perks like early access to this Die Pop PS series, uh, behind the scenes sneak peeks, advanced notice of Etsy shop restocks, and more. Um, all of these are options at varying levels of support and you can find more details about the Cummins Patreon in the video description and in the iCard, which is the top right hand corner of the screen. Patrons, thank you so much for all of your support. Since we are going to use dye powders today, I will be wearing gloves, uh, safety glasses, and I will be wearing a respirator mask. So my voice will be more muffled, um, but uh, personal safety equipment is very important. I could use some more pigments, but since it's summertime, let's use a combination of Dharma Fluorescent Fuchsia, Fluorescent Safety Orange, and Fluorescent Lemon. We also will have a yarn mop off camera, which is just some stroll fingering weight yarn, 7525 Superwash Merino nylon, and I'll be wiping my gloves with dye on it as we are working on our yarn. Uh, I've reduced the heat to low. It's a, still a bit steamy, and dealing with dry powder, you don't really want it steamy, uh, just because you want to, you don't want your gloves to get too moist. But my plan, and we'll start with the lemon, is to add color. And I don't think I'm necessarily going to try to help the color spread. I think that it'll do that pretty well on its own. Whoop, that's a fair amount. So the plan is to go fairly heavy with the, the yellow and then lighter with the yellow on this more intermediate area. I barely see the yellow on our yak. And just so you can see, like, that excess dye on my fingers, I'm wiping it on this yarn, then I'll go rinse and dry my glove. Now coming in with our fuchsia, I'm sure I will be able to see the yellow on the yak when it's dry. But what, it's really hard to see. So that's making me really, really glad I am doing things this way. And then when your glasses get steamy, it gets really hard to see. Because you don't want to add too much of these colors, because if you add way too much, then <laughs> you risk having a lot of bleeding after the fact. So, oh. And it looks like I did accidentally dump some pink in there. I'm sure 
it will be fine. But you'll notice I'm there's a little bit more yellow all over, but I'm just sort of going about halfway with that pink on that area. You want your gloves to be completely dry when you go back into the stock container. And here we are with our safety orange, which is a color I really, really like a lot. Okay, so, and then we need some, I don't want too much. And some orange will probably go onto that one. And that is fine. The goal is it for it to feel a bit gradient E. That is the the goal here. So like I'm not putting orange over this whole thing, I'm putting it over this whole area. Uh, so I hope that that makes some sense. <laughs> and then we'll wait a little bit to let these colors spread out. I am so, so glad that I had that instinct to <laughs> go and shift what I was doing a little bit um, and add that titanium sock in here because I think if I had it, I would really regret it. If I didn't have it, then it would be a lot harder for me to see and feel uh, these colors and the way that this is happening. I will say I do see a difference, like pink here, yellow there. It's going to be subtle, but when you have such a medium brown gray base to start with, the coloration will be subtle no matter what you, no matter what you do. Uh, and oof, all right, let's set a timer for 10 minutes. I do see some speckles remaining, even on, I can definitely see some speckles on the yak as well, in addition to there being some more color spread. But so we'll wait 10 minutes and then come back and start to evaluate uh, what we need to do to proceed with this colorway. It has been 10 minutes and I'm now gonna come in and wiggle. And you can see that we still have Oh, actually, there's not a lot of color on our yak, but there is definitely still some yellow color in here. And I imagine, okay, so it's like the yellow had some, but this actually, the orange is seeming, okay, there's some there. In some places, the powder isn't all the way wet yet, which is why I am going through and doing this stage. You can see, okay, in terms of the pink, um, like right there, there was like a granule of damp orange and so this at this stage is just going to help not only help things spread out a bit but it'll help if there's a powder that needs to dissolve and strike a bit more it'll allow it to do that we still have some speckles more from orange there's a couple on the yellow i suppose um, but it's doing pretty well like there's not as much color in there as if i would have touched it um, right away, but oh, I am so curious. Okay, if I do that, then color will start spreading. Um, but there's probably fairly decent coverage of the color going through, but I'm gonna let this sit another, yeah, let's let it sit another 10 minutes, and then we will flip and add some more color to the other side. Okay, let's check. There is still I think some pigment, but I'm still going to risk flipping, and I'm glad I did because while there was some pigment there, it was not nearly as much um, as it looked when I lifted this. So I think that if we go slowly and carefully, we can move this around. And a lot of times with a lot of yarn, I'm like, okay, you're going to want to flip um, multiple times, but I think two flips with this will be pretty good. You can see that the reverse side of all of this yarn does have uh, some amount of pigment on it, and so that is good. 
but it is also encouraging that to see a lot of the colors have in fact uh, absorbed because that means that we're less likely to have massive bleeding issues later on. There's still some pink in there, but probably what we will do towards the end of all this is, and I'm just sort of spreading things out, we definitely don't need to add nearly as much dye this time as we did last time, um, but I do still want to add at least a bit more. Ah, but after we've waited 10 minutes, moved things around, waited another 10 minutes after dyeing this side, then we can go and add more water and acid if we find that necessary to just sort of help everything onto the end. I popped my mask back on and added layers of color to the other side, um, keeping with the same theme. And once again, I'm really, really, really happy that I have the, um, the paler than now actually brighter skeins in here. It made it easier for me to see approximately where I wanted to add the colors. Uh, I think that if I was doing these yak skeins on their own, maybe I should have gone for something that is deeper in color. Um, so then there would be more contrast with the base in order to do something like this. So that way I would be able to see where the color changes were later on. But nevertheless, uh, I am really, really thrilled with where this is heading. We're currently in that first set of 10 minutes waiting here, but I just sort of wanted to show off our beautiful bright yarn mop that I've been using along the way to wipe all that excess dye off of my gloves. Uh, you guys know this is one of my favorite techniques. I will go ahead and steam set this off camera for 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, I'm coming in now to tap and move. Since we have not been using uh, any cover here, there is definitely going to be some liquid loss um, in the time period that we have been dyeing this yarn. Uh, and so I will be, I think I already mentioned, but after the next uh, 10 minutes I will come in and we'll add some more water and vinegar to help things set. But right now the goal is less to like move color through but just to make sure that all of that powder that we've added is wet and then can absorb to the yarn. So we'll be back in 10 more minutes. I'm now coming in with two cups of water that had six tablespoons of white vinegar in it. That's just to add the acid. I'm gonna come and add another four cups of water to the pan. So now in total, and I'm turning up the heat, I've added six cups of water with six tablespoons of white vinegar. And uh, I've poured it in a way that we're gonna try to, if there's powder on these zip ties, I want that to come in. There is a little bit of color in here. There could be some spread of color down here, but I'm not expecting a lot. Um, I'm gonna heat things up to a light simmer again, and then we'll let this sit for 10 minutes before turning off the heat and letting it cool completely in the pan. Things have cooled off. And now I feel like we can check. I'm not seeing any bleeding there, that's good. Nor there. And finally, maybe a hint, but not bad at all. I'm actually now going to pick up all of this yarn and we can go and wash it. <laughs> I'm not expecting to see well, we might see a hint because there might have still been some dye on the zip ties. But I'm expecting to, or at least hoping, to see minimal bleeding. And wahoo. Uh, I love playing with fluorescent colors, but I'm also afraid of them. I'm going to add a little bit of just some clear dish soap to the rinse. Okay, let's see. Again, this is the first time I've ever dyed this yak blend, so I'm not entirely sure how um, it responds overall, but we do have color in there. It's just compared to the brightness of the cream yarn, it doesn't show up nearly as much. So we'll have to wait a little bit for that to be dry to get a full sense. but. 
I'm not seeing any bleeding. So I'm going to rinse out the soap and then we'll come put this through a spin dryer, hang it to dry and come back and wash the yarn mop. I would say that over the next year, I intend to do more yarn like this, but dyed intentionally. I do find it harder to do intentionally because whenever I'm hand painting yarn, I sort of obsess over the placement to create something balanced, but like just the restraint and the brightness of color in here is so fun. And oh, I always get so glad when there is no color bleeding. And once again, adding some soap. And yeah, I'll rinse out the soap, put this through the spin dryer with the rest of the yarn, and hang everything up to dry. The way I have the yarn on the zip ties allows me to arrange it like this, and it looks so cool. So, so, so cool. And in fact, let's flip it over. And I'll have to twist things up because I think it's a little bit hard to get a sense of the gradient on our Yak blend. Just because I think that the brightness and the highlighter quality of the off-white yarn base, bare base, makes um, it a little harder to see, but there's no question that we have a beautiful fade set on both of our colorways. This is approximately uh, the way we had things in the pan. And the reason why I'm saying approximately is I can't remember, you know, if the paler ones, which side they were on, but you can really see the progression here. And if I remove the brights entirely, then it, it starts to become even more apparent. And I'm gonna take every other skein to make our two sets of five on this Yak blend. These two fade sets are not identical. Um, some of the color transitions here are a bit more subtle. Like the way, and I might switch this up, but so for example, this skein has more yellow and orange, and this one is more orange with some yellow hints. Um, so they actually feel a little bit different, but this is distinct from the next one where we have pink introduced, and then I think we have even more pink. But I might actually swap them like that um, because this one already has a little bit of pink in it and this one is more true orange just because of where they were located. So there's no question that you could can use all 10 of these together and I think that that would be the truest kind of gradient. But by having more skeins in the pan, um, it really allowed me to differentiate and have five distinct colorways that you can then use in a progression for some kind of gradient, and even a variegated gradient. As for the technique, there are a few soft speckles, but speckles weren't necessarily the goal. The goal was to have reasonable coverage, but we gave a little bit of a chance so maybe we could have tonal variation in there. And even in the yellow, you can see a more golden yellow versus that bright highlighter yellow. And I mean, it looks a little blown out on camera, but that uh, does make a little bit of a difference because how some of it strikes a little faster and some is a little more blown out. I love this Yak base and I'm going to play with it more. Uh, I also just, I mean, I love, 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 I think, what is this, the titanium suck? Um, I think that that base two-ply is beautiful, and I love the, I love chunky plies and tight twists. That is something I enjoy in yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope to do more fade sets like this in the future. I love this technique, and there's just, there's a lot to explore with it and a lot of fun. And the difference between having these bright fluorescent colors on a white base versus a grayish, more neutral base is extreme. And that's so fun. And I'm excited to play with these colors even more. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and have your notifications turned on. And if you haven't already gone to check out the Patreon, please do. 
I would like to give such a huge thank you to all of the Chemnitz patrons and all of the viewers out there for supporting the content that I am creating here. I love playing with color and yarn. This is my happy place and it is an absolute joy to take something I am so passionate and enthusiastic about and get to share this with you on a regular basis. And I really hope that I can inspire you to try something new and different. Whether you want to start trying to dye yarn or maybe it's you know a different craft or something that maybe you're nervous to try. Sometimes just going for it and trying it can lead to a whole journey that you didn't even know that was missing from your life. It's just so funny for me to look back at that moment when I had multiple skeins of like this off-white 20% wool 80% acrylic yarn and I was like I don't want this to be white anymore I want to dye it. Ran to the store got Kool-Aid and then the rest is history and here I am with hundreds and hundreds of yarn dyeing videos. Oh no how could I forget our yarn mop? This bonus skein that I had off to the side to wipe my hands on is beautiful. In addition to the splotches of color, there are actually some speckles in here. And it's just fun and bright, and I love this technique so much. Uh, and this is something that it's just, because I have access to the yarn and because I love the result, it means that I'm putting less dye down the drain, and which is just another good thing. So this is a really just fun way for me to use up that extra dye on my fingertips and I love it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching everyone.